the last model of the atom that we're going to talk about and the one that is currently accepted, the one that's probably right, because you, you know, like in 1897, we went from the Dalton model to the Thompson model, and then we went to the Rutherford model, and then we went to the Bohr model, and then we went to the Schrodinger or the electron cloud model or the quantum mechanical model. It's got all kinds of different names, all in a span of about 33 years. In the last almost 90 years, we haven't changed. For 90 years almost, we've accepted this electron cloud slash quantum mechanical model slash Schrodinger model to be the model. So it seems as if, it seems as if we finally nailed it. Let me tell you about this electron cloud model of the atom. A guy named Louis de Broglie, de Broy, it, it looks like de Broglie, but it's pronounced de Broglie. Said that, look, if, if waves like light can be particles, then why can't particles like electrons be waves? De Broglie, in around 1930, said that electrons and other particles, even like baseballs and semi-trucks, have a wave nature associated with them. Photons can be waves and particles. Electrons can be particles and waves. And he derived an equation that described mathematically the wave nature of those particles like electrons, but we don't have to do, we don't have to do the mathematics of it, so we won't. You just need to know that, according to De Broglie, there is a wave nature associated with particles like electrons. And evidence for that wave nature didn't come right away, but it did come, come along later on through electron diffraction experiments. Okay, so we fire, we fire a light, we fire waves at this, this two-slit diffraction grating or double-slit experiment. We have a screen down here, and what do we end up seeing if we have light? Well, we end up seeing this, right? An interference pattern if it's light. If it's a wave, we see an interference pattern, right? What do we expect to see if we fire electrons one at a time through those openings? Well, we would expect to see this. If we fire electrons one at a time through these openings, we would see a bunch of electrons kind of coming together right there and a bunch of electrons coming together right there behind these two openings, right? But that's not what we see. Okay, we fire these electrons one at a time through there. We end up seeing this interference pattern. So electrons must have a wave nature. Evidence for de Broglie's hypothesis. Evidence for the wave nature of things like particles. Now, we wouldn't see this for baseballs because the wave nature tends not to be observable for things that are so massive. And that comes from the equations that de Broglie derived that we don't go into. But you do see the wave nature of things that are so light like electrons. So there is a wave associated with orbiting electrons. That's the de Broglie hypothesis. And that was supported by electron diffraction experiments. Schrodinger, as he's devising the electron cloud model of the atom or the quantum mechanical model of the atom, uh, took advantage of that, took advantage of that knowledge that electrons behave as waves. He said that essentially that the electrons, as they orbit around the nucleus, that small, dense, positive nucleus, don't orbit around in specific places like Bohr. It's kind of like taking a step back a little bit from Bohr, right? Bohr is this certain, right? This is exactly where the electrons are. Okay, this is exactly where this one is, and this one is, and this one is. And Schrodinger's not tossing out the idea of electron levels. He's just saying that these electrons, they, are, they do orbit around on levels characterized by certain energies, but their position, that's a little bit tougher to pinpoint. In fact, it's impossible to pinpoint. Because they're orbiting around not as particles, but they're orbiting around as waves. So these electrons end up not being on a specific position, 
but they end up being in a cloud. Now, quantum physics gets pretty wacky because uh, De Bruyne said that electrons behave like waves, but not once you try to look at them. Like it's it's wacky, but there's 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 a ton of evidence out there that he's right. As soon as you try to observe where the electrons are, then they actually start behaving like particles. So when we're not observing them, they behave like waves. When you observe them, they behave like particles. Um, so we start looking here. They're waves, but we start looking for a particular position, not like not with our eyes, right? Because you can't see electrons with our eyes, but observing in any way. Um, they can be found somewhere, but anywhere within that cloud. Bohr predicted that the first level of electrons would be found right here at a specific radius. Schrodinger is saying that's the most probable location for them, but they could be found anywhere within this cloud. Does that make a little bit of sense? Where's Mrs. Stafford right now, Bruce? Probably in her office. Good answer. Probably in her office. I'd say there's probably like an 80% chance she's in her office. Okay? That would be like the Bohr radius, where Bohr predicted the electrons would be. Okay, Schrodinger said, hey, there's a good chance that that's exactly where the electron is. But there is a, a real probability that Mrs. Stafford is somewhere else, right? She could be in the atrium. She could be down the math wing, although there's a, high, there's a less probability that she's in the math wing than she is in the atrium. And, a, and, and even in the atrium, there's a smaller probability than she's in her office, right? The most probable location is her office. And then the further away we get from her office, the less probable it is that she's there. She, I mean, she couldn't be outside. She could have went home because she forgot something and she had to drive home to get it. Probably not. But there's, a, there's an actual probability that she is. She could have, in fact, got up this morning and said, I'm sick and tired of this snow. Exams are next week. I just want to take a break. And she flew to Mexico this morning. Maybe. That's a pretty small probability. But it's, it's an actual probability, right, that she's not here physically in this building that she went to Mexico. The further away you get from this Bohr radius, the less the probability is. But there is still a real probability that an electron orbiting around an atom, a nucleus right here, that electron could conceivably be in DeWinton orbiting around, although it would be an incredibly small probability of that. Does that make sense? That level is still the first level. It's still characterized by a specific energy, but its exact location is not as pinpointable as it is with Bohr, as Bohr said it was. So it's less certain. But yet, at the same time, it's more certain. We're now certain that we can't be certain. Does that make sense?